Let's talk about image text replacement strategies. So sometimes you just have to use an image to communicate um, a, a text-based element on your page. Now we know the importance of semantic layout, semantic design, the separation of the meaning and the structure, the content of our page and the body of the document, and the CSS or the presentation, uh, the style uh, of our content. Okay, so in our header, we're using H1 and H2, and we are getting quite a bit of visual mileage out of this um, Google font, and then basically in our H1, working with web kits and text stroke and text shadow to to get this um, visual. Okay, but it's it's working and it's doing a good job and it's and it's solving the uh, problem uh, as far as having or using the H1 and the H2 okay but sometimes you just have to use visuals and you just have to uh, hide content so I'll include on exercise 3 I'll include this link to 10 ways to hide elements in CSS. Just one thing that I want to point out here. You might find this page interesting, but um, where, where I'm going is um, the methods below, they visually hide, and the that this page talks about, they visually hide an element, but it may or may not hide the content from assistive technologies, like a screen reader. Okay, so if you have an element which is important to the communication of your message, then you don't always want to just um, take sort of a, um, an unknown approach to hiding that element because you may in fact actually be hiding that element to where screen readers or the machines cannot even get at the content and we want to be careful with that okay so what we're going to what we're talking about is semantically correct accessibility uh, accessibly correct um, ways to hide content but still let the content be found if okay so we're going to visually hide the content but the content can still be found and used all right so one way to do this is you could use position absolute and then you can set top and left to an extremely outrageous uh, like almost 10,000 pixels okay so this works and uh, my understanding is it's, um, it's going to remove an item from the page, taking it out of the flow. It doesn't cause an overflow scrolling issue. And you might find, I'll, I'll include this link on the exercise, but you might find this also very helpful because they have a solution specific to working with um, WordPress. Okay, so people working with WordPress that need to hide something might find these two um, solutions. Uh, very helpful okay and then there's the negative 999 uh, PX the text index uh, indent um, strategy which has worked and worked and worked for years but it creates an issue because if you can just ha get, have a mental picture of your H1 and your H2 are gonna have a box around them they're going to still take up some space, but they're just going to be moved to an extreme left-hand side with text indent. So this works, but it's not the best approach. And I'll, I'll include this link also. But if we go down a little further, I should mention that I believe um, the nine, the negative nine 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 px um, was the uh, FARC uh, rule or the FARC approach. So there's a new one um, referred to as the Kellum uh, uh, method and that is basically uh, using text indent, white space, and overflow. And this is the approach that we're going to use. Okay, So let's just go back and take a quick look at our image here. So this seems to be working well. All right, But again this this is about um, uh, discussing a strategy for moving text so the text still is uh, available but using an image because maybe an image is just uh, going to communicate 
your message better visually. So what I'm going to do is inspect and I'm going to point out one part or an aspect of this text and, and using this um, web kit. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'll just really zoom in here. And now let's scroll over and I might have to zoom in a little bit more. But you can see where the geometry starts to get a little messed up right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select my type. And now with my web kit, okay, so maybe it's a you have an older browser and the older browser just can't use this web kit. So that might be a reason why you want to use an image. But anyway, why I'm going to use an image is I have three pixels of um, width. So if I change this to zero, no, actually um, one, let's go one px okay and now we can see how that type that border is being displayed and we can see where there's some overlaps and some potential problem areas so if i wanted a thicker border like 10 px then you can really see how that geometry overlaps and it's not really the the best solution so what i found was three px was sort of the the best i was going to get as far as this border displaying okay all right so let's go ahead and hide and then we'll go back to a hundred percent so what i did is i set up this image excuse me my type in illustrator and i went ahead and have taken what is the live text otherwise the text that you can still select and edit. And I went ahead and type and created outlines. So I turned this live editable text into vector art. And that's what we did up here. And then what was really nice is I'm able to target individual letters now. And you'll notice that it's really easy to change their stack order to get different um, visual interactions. So I liked the O um, in the back, but what was happening is if I just track this, then the O would go over the top, the I would go over the top. I didn't get really the control that I want if I were just to use uh, tracking or even kerning. So in this case, I had individual letters. I could change their stack order and I could easily change their position okay to get what i wanted as far as my layout okay now once i was done with um with this i went ahead and selected i had um, i had my headline and my subhead i grouped them and i went ahead and exported them first as a 20 as a png 24 with an alpha and you'll see that i ended up getting 71 uh, kilobytes for a size not too bad and then i also exported as an 8-bit uh, png again with an alpha and now this one's 37 kilobytes about half the size a little less than half the size and it came out to look just about as good so um, in this case an 8-bit alpha channel was a good call and that's what I'm going to uh, end up using. All right, so I, I have my image now. Let's go ahead and go back to Code Pen. And let's go into our text. And what I'm going to, our, our code, I should say, I'm going to go ahead and just grab this image element so I don't have to type it all out again. So I'm just going to copy and then paste in this image and I'll update the um, path and this will go to our our new image I think this is headline 8 alpha I believe let me just take a quick look here so it's headline 
8 alpha PNG. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. Let's take a look. And we now have our image showing up and we still have our H1 and H2. So let's go back and let's begin by going to our header and let's add a class. So we're gonna target header, class equals, I'm going to call this hide text, okay? And now let's go over to our CSS, let's find header. And we're gonna do a couple of things here. Let's go ahead and comment out our font family. So we don't want the, no reason to have uh, the font family in here. And let's go ahead next and we're going to take H1 and H2 and the text doesn't need to be styled. It can stay in the default. So let's just go ahead and get rid of H1 and H2, and we will add our dot um, hide text, like so, okay? And let's begin first with that old school, um, uh, uh, it was the, the FARCS uh, accessible image replacement, and that's where we do text indent and we will use an extreme negative number or an amount like negative 9999px, okay? And then we'll go ahead and save. And let's see what happens here. So our text has moved way off the left-hand side here, okay? And now our image, now that text is still taking up some space. All right, it's way off the page here, but it's still taking up some space. And we don't see it, but there's this line being, or, or box being drawn around it, and that was always considered the drawback. We don't see it, but this big old element that uh, the screen readers might be, or different devices might uh, still um, be dealing with that, that uh, big box around that text. Okay, so let's try what is supposedly the, the newer, better way, and this is the, uh, the Kellum method. And we'll now use 100%, okay? And we'll go ahead and save, and let's just see if we, if we see anything happen over here. All right, so there's a little bit of that text from our headline and then there's rocket. So there's the buy part and then there's rocket, okay? So what we need to do next is let's go ahead and set the white space to no wrap, I believe. And then just to play it safe, we're going to take our overflow and we're going to set our overflow to hidden, like so. And then we'll save. And now our text is being moved off the right-hand side, and the overflow is uh, making sure that we can't see it because it's going to be outside of the, um, of the header element. Now we just need to move our text up. So let's go back to header and let's try on our margin. Let's just go zero on our margin and let's try like about 90 and we'll save and we'll refresh. And that's not too bad. Uh, let's move our type up a little bit further. Okay, so let's try negative 50 on our margin. And we're actually pretty close to where we left off. So let's just zoom out 
and yep we are pretty close to what we started with only now we're, we're using an image okay but but because we're using an, an accessible image replacement our text our h1 and our h2 are still on the screen so as an example if we go back to our code and i'm going to select all of the css and just cut the css okay and then we'll save and we'll go back and refresh our page and you'll see that we still have our h1 our h2 all of our other content is here so this is what kind of what this is just the normal flow of the document what a screen reader is going to see and of course we have our image that we're using to replace our text which is the semantically correct way and the accessibly uh, correct way to use an image to replace text on your page or in your layout.